We're going to discuss this topic on building uh, event-driven APIs, uh, and we we'll see you know, how uh, there could be different strategies. Uh, so you know how you can go about building uh, you know real-time APIs, APIs for uh, getting real-time data into your applications, and we'll see uh, you know how that is different from uh, the traditional approach where we're using request and reply patterns. I'm going to start off with you know, slightly uh, you know something technical, trying to differentiate between uh, you know what a REST API, which most of you are familiar with, uh, as compared to uh, streaming APIs, uh, what we'll you know discuss further uh, through the talk uh, today, um, and uh, we'll you know go through an example uh, in specific uh, to understand uh, how this all relates to you know bringing data from. Uh, different uh, sources, uh, you know, stitching it together, and then eventually you want to expose it through you know, APIs. And you know, how can you do all of this? Uh, and we'll go through that uh, through a specific example, which is uh, Customer 360. All right, so let's get started. Um, and uh, if you have any questions at any point in time, uh, you can you know always uh, you know post it in the chat. Um, otherwise, uh, you can always reach out to me, and uh, you know we can have a chat later on. So uh, Jessica from our marketing team has promised that if you attend the session in whole, you would get uh, you know, a number of certificates uh, saying that you were gone through this confluent workshop on uh, API. Uh, for API Days Jakarta, so uh, I would request you to you know hold on and uh, if you can listen to the uh, entire workshop. All right, great. Uh, so, what exactly are even driven APIs? Um, so, if we look at how APIs are exposed, uh, uh, you know, for either to you know get data out from your uh, systems to you know third parties, or if you want to integrate multiple different systems and you want to expose data. Uh, from services uh, or applications that you're running, uh, you essentially would, you know, define some sort of a service that can query data from the underlying sources, uh, and you expose that uh, through an HTTP endpoint. Uh, over a period of time, there have been various different protocols through which you can actually communicate uh, this, and the RESTful way is like a very common pattern as to you know how you can uh, go about uh, designing APIs. So in the RESTful approach, uh, there would be a backend server. Uh, you have your application that needs to consume uh, the data, and you pretty much use like a pull pattern, which means that the application sends uh, in a request. Uh, it does something on the backend uh, service, and then the server returns a response, uh, which can be consumed by the application. So typically in this approach, you have a connection which is open, uh, you have the request being sent, you get the response back, and the connection is closed. So you can think of it as a very you know, transactional way where you're firing in a request, getting back the response, and that's all you have in terms of communication with the server. Um, An event-driven uh, approach is you know, very different from you know, how uh, a RESTful approach is, which is a request reply pattern. An event-driven approach, you basically open a connection from the application to the server, and the server basically pushes the information to the application. So every time uh, there's a change on the server side, you basically get notified with new uh, you know, messages uh, into the application. So it's different from, again, the RESTful pattern where you're doing a request reply. Uh, on the event-driven uh, approach, you basically have a continuous connection uh, and you see continuous updates which are being pushed in from the server. <clears throat> Uh, this whole, uh, you know, idea of uh, you know going for event-driven uh, architectures or event-driven API-based uh, systems is uh, with the advent of uh, newer protocols. So traditionally, most of the internet communication is done through HTTP or HTTPS uh, protocol. So uh, when it started off, it basically didn't have uh, this concept of pipelining. So which means that the client opens a connection, you send in a uh, request to the server. Once that uh, server, you know, addresses that request, you get a response back, and you would be able to uh, continue with uh, subsequent requests. Uh, with uh, 
you know, more and more web applications and mobile applications being developed, uh, this kind of pattern was seen to have a lot of latency. Uh, so instead, what was uh, proposed was to use uh, a pattern uh, which is called as HTTP pipelining, where you could send in multiple requests uh, that could be uh, asynchronously processed on the server side, and then you would be able to uh, get the results back as and when the responses are ready. So in this case, uh, as you can see uh, on the right hand side, uh, this whole approach of HTTP pipelining uh, helped uh, you know applications uh, to be you know low latency at the same time uh, address and uh, you know multiple requests at the same time. Uh, so for going from this whole approach of request reply to an uh, event-driven or streaming API pattern, uh, it starts off with the HTTP protocol. Then there were other protocols uh, which were uh, you know, kind of uh, researched and developed uh, on by Google, which was Speedy. Uh, and then over a period of time, that kind of uh, you know became a standard, which is uh, HTTP2. So with HTTP2, and that's something which we'll explore uh, more in this workshop, uh, we'll see how web applications can leverage on HTTP2 to get continuous data from the server. So this whole approach of you know cont getting continuous data uh, from the servers, uh, which is uh, you know pushed to the application, is uh, what we define as an event-driven API or a streaming API. All right, for this, we're gonna go through uh, an example of uh, Customer 360. Uh, so many of you would be familiar with you know, what Customer 360 is. Uh, essentially, you're trying to build uh, a holistic view of your customer uh, across multiple different uh, databases or channels that you have uh, within your organization. So this could be you know, data of the customer, uh, which uh, is probably present in a you know, CRM database, uh, it could be transaction data, which is you know part of a financial system. Uh, it could be other interactions that the customer has uh, with your business. That could be through click streams or uh, you know other events which are logged in from maybe a mobile application. So you can think of you know every touch point that the customer has had with your business is kind of stitched together uh, to you know build up this customer 360 view. Uh, now the benefit of you know building such a customer 360 view is that you can uh, you know, send in, uh, uh, you can design new promotions and campaigns, uh, which uh, you can utilize to uh, either improve customer service or you can also send in um, uh, new offers uh, to the customers in real time as well. So, the idea of building a customer 360 is that you have a holistic view of the customer. And in addition to that, uh, we're going to see how uh, taking a, you know, even driven approach uh, will actually uh, help us design the system. Uh, in a real-time fashion. <clears throat> All right, so what we're going to be doing uh, through this workshop is uh, we go through, uh, uh, you know, how this particular system can be built, uh, all the way from sourcing data, uh, you know, doing the necessary uh, transformations uh, in real-time, and then pushing the results uh, into what is called as the Customer 360 view. Uh, and we'll see how an application uh, can consume uh, the data in real time. Uh, so every time there's a change on the source side, uh, so if there's, for example, an update uh, in the customer's uh, master data, for example, if the customer uh, changes uh, his or her address, uh, if the customer updates a phone number, uh, you want that to reflect uh, in the materialized uh, customer 360 view uh, immediately. Uh, and uh, along with that, uh, if there is, uh, you know, transactions which are being captured that the customer makes, uh, you want that to be updating the customer 360 view uh, in real time as well. So for all this, uh, we'll see that uh, we'll make use of uh, event driven API or streaming API uh, to which these changes are continuously uh, subscribed from uh, and uh, it can be utilized uh, on your application. So in order to build this whole thing, we're going to look at you know how Confluent can help you do that. So one aspect of it is uh, the Confluent platform itself. Uh, and Confluent, uh, we built uh, you know messaging slash even a stream processing system uh, on top of Apache Kafka. So Kafka is uh, something which is at the core of Confluent, uh, where uh, you can you know send uh, the data from your source systems uh, and can be subscribed from. Uh, and we'll also see other components of the Confluent platform, which will help us kind of build this whole uh, system together. 
So Kafka Connect uh, is one uh, particular uh, you know, component which will allow us to run what we call as connectors. Uh, connectors are the ones that can bring in data from your source systems uh, and push that into uh, Kafka topics. Uh, you can think of topics as, again, uh, tables in uh, database terms. So your source data gets captured from uh, the database tables. It reflects as a Kafka topic uh, to which the messages are being sent uh, into, within Kafka. Uh, along with that, we'll also explore uh, what's called as, uh, a schema registry as well as KSQL DB. So in your source systems, uh, typically you would have, especially if it's business applications, you would typically have a defined schema for how you store uh, the records of your customer. And you want that to reflect uh, in any system that is consuming uh, those records uh, downstream as well. Uh, so in that case, what you do is you push uh, the data into Confluent Platform. Uh, at the same time, before you do that, you register the source uh, table schema. Uh, in what we call as the schema registry. Uh, and then you would be able to process the data on the fly uh, using what we call as KSQL DB. Uh, now, KSQL DB is quite a critical component here. Uh, one, uh, it helps us to uh, capture all of the data uh, in real time and act upon it. Uh, the second is that it would be able to you know, build this kind of a pipeline. So going from uh, you know, one single system that is being integrated to build a customer 360 view, to joining across multiple different systems. Uh, that's something which KSQL DB is gonna help us uh, achieve. Uh, number three is that uh, to finally realize you know, what a customer 360 view looks like, uh, again, which means that every time there's a change in the source system, you want that change to propagate and flow into your materialized view. So in that case, you would be able to uh, yeah, leverage on KSQL DB for that. Uh, and finally, we'll see that you know KSQL DB also acts like a an API server, uh, which means that I can uh, issue uh, both RESTful as well as uh, you know streaming uh, queries uh, to uh, the KSQL DB server, and I get the response back, which can be used uh, within my application. All right, hope all that sounds uh, quite exciting to uh, all of you who's attending. And we'll see how that goes uh, through, you know, uh, executing this whole flow. So we're gonna break it down and see, you know, how uh, the source uh, system looks like. So ideally, uh, just for this uh, example, we've considered two different, uh, you know, systems. So I've built up a SQL server, uh, which contains the customer master data. So in a real world scenario, you can think of, uh, the CRM uh, system, which is probably Microsoft Dynamics, which runs on a SQL server. Uh, and you want to get the data, the customer must data from there uh, into your uh, Confluent Platform cluster. Uh, the other uh, system that we've considered for this uh, example is the Oracle DB. So uh, typically financial information or transactional data is captured uh, within Oracle DB. And you want to be able to move that uh, into uh, Confluent uh, in the Kafka topics as well. Uh, so uh, for the purpose of this workshop, we've kind of taken multiple tables on both these different systems. Uh, so on the customer uh, 360 side, you would have uh, customer master information. So uh, typically like a profile information of a customer, which could uh, contain like a customer ID to identify the customer. You would have uh, other attributes like, uh, you know, name and date of birth of the customer and additional profile information like uh, the address and the phone number, et cetera. Okay. And these could be, you know, uh, across multiple different tables. And what we're going to do is see how uh, we can uh, use KSQL DB to stitch these uh, attributes together so that we have a single profile view of the customer. Uh, on the other hand, on the uh, transactional database side, we would have, uh, again, uh, tables which contain probably the account information. Uh, and we, in addition, we probably also have um, transactions which are being captured in a different table so uh, which could you know contain the transaction type uh, the amount of the transaction uh, an identifier for the transaction the timestamp at which it occurred and uh, essentially we want to be able to capture all of this in real time which means every time a transaction occurs an insert happens into the database table and we want to uh, reflect that into a Kafka topic and then push that into uh, you know, a downstream system 
<clears throat> and once we stitch all of this uh, information from these two different source uh, systems, which is the SQL Server and Oracle DB, uh, we want to stitch that together <clears throat> into what we call is uh, KSQL DB uh, materialized view. So for the materialized view, uh, you'll see that uh, it stitches together information from uh, the multiple tables from the customer master data. So that's all of the prof profile attributes of the customer. And also uh, it stitches together the uh, information from the transactional uh, tables, which is uh, the latest balance uh, of the customer based on all the transactions uh, that they've done. Right, so you'll see that the final, you know, customer 360 view is uh, not just, um, you know, uh, you know, singular attributes of the customer. So it's also uh, containing uh, some aggregated attributes. So for example, in order to calculate the latest balance of the customer, you want to you know summarize all the transactions, look at the transaction type, whether it's a deposit or a withdrawal, and then eventually you want to uh, aggregate that such that we have the latest balance of the customer. So any application that needs to know, you know the latest balance of the customer can simply uh, you know, look up this particular C, uh, customer 360 view, and that gets pushed into the uh, you know application. All right, so let's kind of step through the whole process as to you know how we can go about you know building the system. Uh, step one would be you know sourcing the data. So we're going to use a uh, couple of uh, connectors uh, which are part of the Confluent platform and the uh, Confluent hub ecosystem that we have. Uh, and we're going to use uh, Debezium's uh, CDC uh, source connector uh, to SQL Server. And we look at the Oracle CDC source connector, which can get uh, data as and when it's uh, captured uh, in real time on the source side. So every time there's an insert, update, or delete on the source tables, it's going to get reflected uh, and captured uh, to your Kafka topic. So we can quickly you know, have a look at you know, how this would reflect like. So here we have both the connectors running, so not getting into details uh, over here. For those of you who are interested uh, in the technical details, I'll share the uh, GitHub for this uh, later, and you can you know, go ahead and uh, you know play around with this and uh, you know, explore it further. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to look at <clears throat> uh, you know the process itself. So once you run the connectors, uh, every time there's a change uh, on the uh, source side, uh, it would capture uh, all of the data uh, within KSQL DB. So the first step is that we'd be able to uh, you know, get all of the data into Kafka topics. And from within KSQL DB, which is closely integrated to the uh, Kafka, uh, which is running as part of your uh, Confluent platform, you would see that uh, there are uh, for each table on your source side, you have a corresponding Kafka topic uh, where the messages are being captured. So the first time the connector runs, if there are uh, if there are uh, tables which are already populated and uh, you want that to be reflected within your Kafka topics, it would initially load all of that data into the Kafka topics as in when uh, you run the connector. So once all of the data appears within a Kafka topic, uh, the connector continues to uh, you know, kind of uh, listen uh, to the source tables and see that if there is any change that occurs. And subsequently, every time there's a change, uh, it would update uh, the Kafka topic with a new message. So this is the whole concept of event-driven uh, architecture, where if there is a particular event, which is a change that is happening on the source uh, database uh, or the source tables, uh, it would immediately be captured as an event, which gets reflected within the Kafka topic. Now, say a customer makes a deposit of uh, X amount uh, of you know dollars or rupees uh, within their account, it gets immediately reflected on to uh, the Kafka topic as a message. So similarly for customer information, we have like the address, phone, and profile topics uh, to which uh, those uh, you know messages are being captured as well. So probably we can just quickly look at you know how these messages are being captured. So primarily we are uh, making use of uh, JSON, which is a common you know, message format that we use across, uh, you know, uh, designing APIs and communicating from system to system. So you can pretty much use see that uh, these systems. Uh, so the tables, uh, the data which is uh, there in the source tables, gets pushed into the Kafka topics, 
uh, and they are captured uh, in a format which is similar to JSON, right? Okay, so um, so we get the idea that you know we use the connectors to get data from the source systems and push that into uh, say Confluent platform, uh, and that's captured within the Kafka topics. Now the next part would be uh, building this whole you know pipeline. It looks a little complex, but actually when you go about uh, build you know just you know, going through the steps, you'll understand that it's pretty much taking data from uh, all these different tables that we have sourced from, and we're going to join these uh, to you know project what we're calling as the customer 360 view. Now, in order to be able to build that customer 360 view, uh, we'll create a uh, you know, couple of different things which are called streams. Uh, so streams uh, within KSQL DB, uh, you can consider it as every single message which is coming into a Kafka topic. Uh, is captured as a stream. So a stream is where data keeps flowing in through that particular system, uh, and it's being captured over time. Uh, the second uh, concept is of tables. Uh, so that's similar to uh, database tables where we want to have some sort of persistent uh, data over a period of time, right? So in that case, uh, we use uh, make use of tables. So here, until we get to the whole uh, you know, customer 360 view, uh, we're going to view uh, all these source tables as streams. Uh, the reason we're doing that uh, is if we compare it to how we're doing it across databases, uh, databases will do joins, and all of that is being computed uh, you know, as and when we issue the queries. So when we run those queries, it's a complex operation. It takes quite a bit of uh, time, and then uh, you know, all of the data is, you know, get, gets populated in the resulting view. Uh, with uh, Confluent and stream processing systems, we're going to do it slightly different. So we're going to uh, look at every single uh, entry which is made on the source table side. It's going to get populated into a stream, uh, which means we're not looking at all of the data at the same time. We're just looking at every event that occurs uh, over a you know, window of time. And we're going to stitch uh, together these uh, attributes to form the customer 360 view uh, by joining across uh, all these multiple different streams. All right, so once we build that logic of you know, getting all the attributes which are necessary to build up the customer 360 view, uh, we will eventually you know, materialize that view. So materialize uh, the view in KSQL DB means that I would be able to query that view uh, at a later point. Uh, and also uh, the view actually gets updated every time there is a change on the source side. You can think of it this way again, the source side, there's a particular change. Uh, and that is captured as an event, and that even gets propagated through this entire pipeline, and eventually will go and populate uh, the materialized view, uh, which is the customer 360 view. Okay. So, a slightly different mental model of you know how we design applications. So traditionally, we were uh, used to having all the data in one place and then doing the joins over there. Uh, here, we're going to look at every time there's a new uh, data point uh, in the source systems it would pretty much flow through this uh, pipeline in real time. And that's how we're going to populate the customer 360 view. So the customer 360 view is not just you know, all the attributes of the customer, but it would also have uh, you know, the latest uh, attributes uh, for each of those uh, projections that we have. Right, so before we get on to the next stage, uh, so uh, for those of you who are uh, technically inclined and would like to you know try this out again we'll share this uh, later uh, you know on uh, github uh, but essentially to build this uh, pipeline uh, which we just you know went through uh, we'll have to execute a number of uh, SQL statements so this would be similar to you know what we do uh, in the database world uh, where we're doing you know joins across tables and so on to create uh, like a view. Um, instead, over here, uh, we're creating streams uh, which are being joined uh, in order to create that particular uh, you know, view. Right, so I'll quickly just go through these uh, and execute them so that we understand you know, how uh, these are being built. So, uh, so initially, we're creating streams for uh, all of the transactional uh, information, which is captured from the Oracle database. So you have the account information, you have uh, the transactional uh, information, 
Uh, and then next, we're going to create streams of the Kafka topics, which capture data from the uh, SQL Server system. So all the customer master data uh, and the profile information of the customer from the uh, CRM system is going to be converted into what we call as uh, streams based on the uh, Kafka topics. <clears throat> All right, so we're almost there. Uh, the last stream that we would create is pretty much looking at joining all of the uh, information across and that we have sourced from both the SQL Server and the Oracle database. And finally, we create what is called as a customer 360 view, uh, which is a table, or in other sense, it's a materialized view within KSQL DB. So we'll see now that uh, this particular view uh, that we've created has uh, all the information of a particular customer uh, along with the transaction information. So on the source side, we had three different tables for uh, the customer profile information. We had two different tables on a different database, which is Oracle uh, containing the transaction information. Uh, and what we've done is pretty much stitch everything together uh, into a single view of the customer. So here we see that uh, it also contains aggregate information like the account balance. Uh, so to appreciate the understanding of you know, an event-driven system, uh, we'll actually see what uh, goes behind this uh, whole 360 view. So if we run a query that is uh, continuous, we'll see all of the events which actually lead to us building up this customer 360 view. So you'll be able to appreciate the fact that uh, you know, how it was done before to build a customer 360 system where you have all the tables with all the data and then you do the expensive join operations. Here we're doing, uh, looking at each of those attributes coming in uh, into Kafka topics in real time. We're building on those as streams and the streams are joining only uh, the events which are occurring within a specific time window. Right? So here we basically look at all the uh, transactions plus the customer profile information and all of this together uh, like we saw earlier, will give us the uh, final customer 360 view. All right. So we also looked at you know the couple of approaches how we can query these views. So again, depending on the kind of APIs that you want to build, or depending on the applications that you want to build. Uh, if your applications uh, require, say, maybe the customer profile information, which doesn't get updated uh, that often, uh, what you would do is simply fire in a, a you know, HTTP request, and you want to get back a response with the customer profile information based on the customer 360 view. So for that, uh, we call it as a pull query, where you can fire the query, get the response back, and use it within your application. For cases where things are getting updated um, in real time, so maybe like an account balance uh, or the number of uh, transactions that the customer has done uh, or the number of clicks uh, that the particular customer has had uh, on a specific channel like a mobile banking app, uh, you would actually be able to you know, uh, send in what is called as a push query, which updates uh, the view in real time. So on your application side, you would you know, issue a streaming API query and it opens the connection. And every time there's a change on the server side, it would push you with the latest information uh, to the application. So we look at you know, how that st streaming API is uh, can be utilized as well. All right, so the you know, uh, API part of the whole uh, you know, system or the flow uh, is pretty much uh, you know, issuing uh, API requests uh, to the KSQL DB server either using a pull query or a push query, depending on the use case that we have in hand. So here we have a couple of uh, options. So we have uh, the pull query, which can be uh, used to look up the customer profile information of uh, a specific customer. So you would specify a key, uh, and then you want to query the customer 360 view, uh, and that would give you back the results. So here we're making use of the uh, HTTP2 protocol, so that would keep the connection alive. Uh, if it is a continuous query. If it is not, it simply gives back the response and ends the connection. Uh, on the second uh, type 
uh, which is the fair bottom, we have the push query. So for push query, we typically would have the request, uh, the connection being open, the request being sent, uh, and there would be an update uh, every time there's a new event uh, on the source side. Uh, so on the source side, when there's an update, it would flow through that pipeline. It would update the customer 360 view. And once that is updated, it would reflect as a new event, uh, which is sent back as a response to the uh, API. So let's just probably you know quickly look at you know how that again uh, materializes. So just before that, we will probably look at uh, you know making a change on the source side, and we'll see how that is reflected uh, on the uh, target uh, customer three sixty view. So let's you know run this particular view again. Let's query that. And we see, you know, all these events that have occurred so far uh, from the source systems uh, kind of stitched together. And then now what we're going to do is make a change on the source side and see if that propagates uh, to the uh, customer 360 view in uh, real time. And once we see that, we're going to also make use of the uh, API and see how that is, uh, you know, getting the response back in real time as well. Okay, so we're going to make a change. Uh, let's probably do it for the Oracle database, or we'll make a change in the profile of the customer on the SQL Server side first. Right. So let's probably update the customer profile. So we're updating the phone number of that particular customer, and we'll see that it would immediately reflect as a new event uh, in the Customer 360 view. All right, so that is reflected. And the next, what we're gonna do is make a change on the Oracle side. So let's probably make another transaction for a specific customer. Uh, maybe we you know, deposit another $500 into the savings account of the uh, customer uh c101 right so we're just going to do that all right And that will get reflected on the materialized view as well. Now we're going to look at you know how we can query that from the materialized uh, view using an API. So for that, we're just going to look at the uh, API. So we're making use of the HTTP two protocol, and then we're going to push uh, the results into the uh, target system. Right. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and run that script. So we can see that the pull queries are uh, immediately getting the responses back from the uh, source system. And for uh, even driven API or a streaming API, which is the case where we're issuing a push query, it's actually waiting for new events. So every time there's a new event, uh, you would get a new response from the server side, which is being pushed to the application. All right. So I hope you know that kind of uh, helps you to get a picture of you know how you can build uh, real-time systems and expose that through uh, you know streaming APIs or uh, you know what we call as event-driven APIs. So the whole idea of event-driven APIs is to be able to capture events uh, as they occur in real time in the source systems and propagate them uh, to be able to reflect uh, on a system which is consuming that data as well. So we just you know, walk through uh, 
specific example for that. So customer 360 and as in when, uh, you know, new records are entered in the source system uh, that would flow through uh, this particular pipeline and that reflects within the uh, master view of the customer. And you can make use of the uh, HTTP2 protocol to query that system uh, either, again, uh, through a request reply pattern if you want specific information from the customer profile uh, or if you want every time there's an update on the customer profile or there's a new transaction, if you want that uh, in real time to be consumed on your application side, uh, you would simply uh, you know, use make use of the uh, streaming API or the event driven API for that. All right, so with that, uh, I'm pretty much close to what I wanted to share uh, today. Um, so before I you know, kind of end uh, the presentation, uh, the, I just share the uh, GitHub uh, to this specific uh, you know, example. And if you're interested in, uh, you know, trying out this workshop from your side, and if you want to uh, get back on uh, any of those, uh, I'd be happy to, you know, take questions either through the uh, GitHub issues, uh, or uh, if you're interested uh, in contributing back through, you know, specific examples that you have, uh, that'd be something which uh, would be great as well. All right, so that's pretty much uh, what I have for the workshop. Uh, and I promised Jessica to flash this slide up uh, at the end as well. Uh, so we do have uh, you know, vouchers for those of you who are uh, you know, kind enough to take a two minute survey. Uh, and you can get some vouchers from uh, you know, one of our uh, customers, which is uh, OPPO. All right, so that's the QR code. And uh, I'll just leave it uh, open for maybe a minute or two. And then, uh, yeah, once you register on this, I would pretty much uh, be open to take any questions uh, through the chat. So apart from these vouchers, um, Jessica had also you know, requested us to you know, let you know that uh, Confident would be sending out uh, like a workshop certificate uh, of attendance. So that's something which you can uh, probably look out for uh, if you've you know, shared your emails across to the uh, organizers. All right, so that's it uh, for the workshop from my side. Hope uh, it was uh, informative uh, or useful to those of you who attended. And uh, I'll just you know switch over to the chat to see if there are any questions. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to post the GitHub link in the chat. Uh, there you go. All right, so there's a few questions from Deepo, uh, Anshul, and Deshna. Uh, okay, I'll probably take you know it from the top to bottom. Um, Uh, how to access survey in English? Uh, yeah, I think the one is in Bahasa, uh, but if you're opening it on Google Chrome, I think it can you know help you translate it to uh, English. Understand that CDC is used to capture data changes, but in regards to process the data, whether to manipulate or enrich. In the stream, is it performed in one of the Kafka pipeline, or we have to create subscriber services to do so? 
So what we have considered for this particular uh, you know example of walkthrough is uh, that we're doing uh, you know what we call as manipulation or enrichment um, using uh, KSQL DB. Uh, so the data comes into the Kafka topic. So no change is being made uh, on the connector side. So we're uh, taking the data as is from the source systems and you know pushing that through into a Kafka topic. And once it lands in a Kafka topic, we pretty much create streams from that uh, and we manipulate or enrich the data uh, you know, uh, on these streams. Uh, is there other ways of doing that? Yes, so you can consider uh, doing some you know, uh, basic transformations uh, using what we call as uh, SMTs on the Kafka Connect side. Uh, and that's possible. So even before the data lands within Kafka, uh, you can actually uh, make those transformations, uh, which can get pushed into Kafka topics. So that's your other option of doing it uh, on the connector side. Uh, can you post the GitHub link? I, yeah, I've uh, done that. Will the slides be available after the session? I think so, yeah. I remember the organizers letting us know that the slides as well as uh, uh, the recording is of the session is something which you can uh, request for. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jonathan, uh, do you propose to connect from AS400 DB2 and then translate those tables there into Kafka topics? Uh, yeah. uh, for AS400 DB2, so DB2, the connectors would be like a JDBC source connector, and then you, uh, you know, kind of pull the table uh, in frequent intervals and then capture the changes and you push that into the Kafka topics. Uh, for AS400, uh, typically the pattern is that we see customers using uh, MQ as a source uh, and to kind of offload uh, the data from the mainframe. Uh, it comes into the uh, MQ, and then you use uh, JMS source connector. The uh, topics, uh, I mean, if uh, within the MQ you've created you know JMS uh, topics, then you uh, use the JMS source connector and bring it over, or you can use the MQ source connector that. Uh, Confident provides as well. Hope that answers your question. Do we need to have like IBM CDC application as a connector to Kafka, or does Confident have specific features to make this happen? Yeah, so for CDC in particular to uh, IBM application, so for DB2, then uh, you would have to use the JDBC. Uh, you know, source uh, connector, and then you will have to use one of the supported modes uh, through which you can capture the changes uh, incrementally. All right, so that's it uh, from my side. And if there are no more questions, okay, there's one more from Jonathan who seems to be a IBM enthusiast. <laughs> so I think I need to do some workaround before I can push the table from AS400 to Kafka topics. Uh, yeah, so in the past, uh, some of uh, our colleagues have uh, you know, extracted data from AS400. Uh, and for that, uh, they did use a uh, specific transformation uh, in, on the Kafka connector side. Uh, so if you're getting data from the MQ side, you typically want to uh, transform some attributes, uh, you know, which can be then you know, supported in raw JSON format. Uh, 